in this screencast, um, we'll uh, um, raise a somewhat controversial uh, topic of proofs. Well, it is controversial in computer science, uh, not in mathematics, for obvious reasons. And um, I will address this topic by talking about two common themes that I have frequently heard from multiple students of uh, um, uh, computer science. So our topic is why bother with proofs. And um, the uh, first theme is, um, well, you cannot make money by proving theorems, um, uh, or uh, it doesn't add anything to my resume, and so forth. So let me, uh, uh, let me talk about uh, this, uh, this theme. Uh, first. Uh, so, um, in computer science, uh, broadly speaking, there are uh, two uh, large uh, groups of methods, right? So, let's call them uh, methods or, um, right, or, or CS methods because we're talking about computer science. So, the first group is uh, formal methods um, and uh, the second group is empirical methods. So, formal methods, um, we'll write it all out, uh, let's write it all out. Uh, are used in uh, algorithms, operations, research, uh, theory of computation, and so forth. And empirical methods are used in many um, applied uh, branches of computer science and many R&D projects combine formal and empirical methods. This is oftentimes it's just not enough to prove that your algorithm is correct. You actually have to uh, implement it and demonstrate it to potential clients. And many online and printed CS materials contain proofs. So it is of vital importance for a CS practitioner to read at least some proofs. Can you get by with without proofs? Yes, probably, but you will always be behind those professionals who can uh, read proofs. Now, so suppose that um, uh, I uh, realize that proofs are somewhat important, so uh, which brings us to the second theme. I am not good at proofs, okay? And my response to that uh, has always been, me neither. Well, if I was, I would do mathematics, obviously, uh, and honestly. In job enjoyment surveys, um, mathematicians continuously rank him on the top. And in many surveys that I have read, they rank much higher than computer scientists and software engineers and IT professionals. So what's the good news? Well, the first piece of good news is that as a student of computer science, um, you can become good at reading and understanding proofs without necessarily becoming good at proving things. So you can be a good proofreader and perhaps not so good uh, proof doer. Um, well, then maybe, maybe a, a proof um, a prover, right? That would be, that's the word that I was looking for, theorem prover. Uh, now, um, uh, so, and, and, it, and it is quite true because the standards are not quite, uh, in many branches of computer science, the standards are not quite as strict as in mathematics. Now, the second piece of good news is that the proof techniques are independent of their subject matter. If you learn them uh, while doing theory of computation, you will be able to apply them on calculus. Uh, they're the same proof techniques, valid proofs and calculus use the same proof techniques as valid proofs and algorithms and theory of computations. And uh, uh, number three, it's m a more philosophical um, uh, view that proving things will probably make you a better observer. Um, so if you consider uh, the uh, etymology of the word theorem, so you will probably uh, find out that uh, two Greek words, the first is a noun and the second is a verb. So the first uh, uh, word is uh, theorema, uh, which means uh, view, spectacle, in some contexts it means uh, speculation. And then the second, uh, the second word is, um, um, uh, is a verb, and it means uh, theorem, uh, which means to consider, to uh, see. Right? So uh, a theorem can be thought of uh, an act of seeing an act of discovering. So if you do theorems, you will learn to see things. So may you become a good observer and a good seer.